So welcome everybody. In this session, we're going to talk about how to build solutions that span across Microsoft Teams, Viva Connections, and SharePoint. My name is Sosa Yuvonen. I'm a program manager in the Microsoft 365 platform team. Now, before we go to the technical details and, and what this is all about, let's talk about slightly about the opportunity. So in Microsoft Teams, pretty recently we said that there's 145 million daily active users. So that's a huge amount of people. And in the, in the SharePoint, the public number right now is more than 200 million monthly active users. And really the beauty of, of the SharePoint framework here is that you can actually build the same component with extents through SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, and Viva Connections. So you can decide where that component is being hosted, or maybe the same component is being visible in all of those three different solutions. So all about um, implementing it once and reusing the code or reusing the exact component, not just copy paste the code between the implementation. And that's where the SharePoint framework uh, story is all about. Now, if we think about the different opportunities for SharePoint Framework and those three different applications, um, you, are, you can use and take advantage of building a web parts and extensions in the Viva Connections or in SharePoint Online. You can create cards. We're going to talk about what these cards are later on in this presentation. Um, you can absolutely create application pages, which are full screen pages uh, in SharePoint side. We can create custom tabs, personal applications, meeting applications and task modules in the Microsoft Teams. So all of those things which have a UX layer. So that's what SharePoint Framework is all about. It is a modern web stack development tool for building uh, extensibility for all of these three different applications. Now, within uh, currently, uh, we're already having tens of millions of uh, users for custom third-party components every single month, uh, which have been built using SharePoint Framework. And there has been already 15 uh, SharePoint Framework, uh, new versions of SharePoint Framework since the general availability back in February 2017, if I remember the year correctly. But it, it's been a while, but again, we're refreshing the new with new versions uh, in multiple times in a year. Now, coming back on the, on the uh, development stack, so SharePoint Framework is really about using industry standard tooling. So you take advantage of the website tooling like Node uh, and MPM and Gallup and, web, uh, and, and TypeScript and Visual Studio Code. So no special technical knowledge is needed, no kind of a SharePoint isms, even though SharePoint Framework kind of refers to that. But it's all about taking advantage of that web stack tooling stack which is by used by all of the web, de web developers uh, in, the, in, the, in the world. Now, I kind of briefly touched already, already different aspects of SharePoint Framework, but just for the recap on where it can be used. So SharePoint Framework can be used for creating a personal applications, uh, for Microsoft Teams, uh, Teams tabs, uh, which are for the channel, meeting applications, starting from the latest version of SharePoint Framework, cards, which we're going to talk about later this uh, within the session, uh, pages, app pages, and extensions. And the same component technically can be pretty much all of these things. So again, you can reuse the code, you can reuse the component and, and pieces of the code in all of these different applications, which is a huge opportunity. Now, let's actually jump into a, a demo related on uh, how do we how we would be implementing a personal application for Microsoft Teams. So in this demo, we'll have a look on how we can use SharePoint Framework to build personal applications for Microsoft Teams. And this, has, this is something which has been available for a while, but we've been further investing on making this easier and easier as part of the, the later SharePoint Framework releases. And in this case, we have a business scenario where we built a custom COVID-19 uh, checking tool and also for uh, for tracing uh, with tracing capabilities. So basically a tool which can be used by the employees to self-checking, a tool which the receptionist can actually use to uh, include quests uh, in the in the office, and then uh, at uh, tool also have additional contact tracing capabilities. Now, the beauty of this tool is that it's based on SharePoint Framework, and it's using Microsoft Graph, of course, behind of the scenes for the additional presence information. So you can actually see that the present information for the tenant uh, users is available and exposed in here. Um, it's also storing all of the information in SharePoint lists. So behind of the scenes, we're using just simple SharePoint SharePoint list based storage. Uh, SharePoint lists can 
uh, store up to tens and tens of millions of uh, list items as long as you don't query them at the same time. So the 5000 SharePoint list item limit is for querying less than 5000 items at the one query, which obviously we can solve with paging and not that often you would actually want to present more than 5000 items in a list format. So you could you typically filter down what you're presenting and then getting the information uh, which you want from the data storage. Now, in this case, uh, we can uh, work this tool. Uh, of course, we can see who is currently registered to which office in a global scale. Uh, and based on the configuration, we, we can see different options uh, in the office list and, and also for the questions. And all of this is actually being driven by configurations in the SharePoint list. So as we're setting up this application, and which, which is an open source application available for you in a GitHub, um, we can actually, you can configure this to use a certain set of locations and you can configure what, what are the relevant locations for you. And then we can also uh, configure the different questions which are relevant for your business case uh, or which are the questions which you want to ask actually ask as part of the, the registration. So let's actually quick through, through this, go this through. So I can actually register the Munich, Germany as an example. I do not have fever. I think if I my temperature is 92 Fahrenheit, that probably is reasonable. I'm not really that familiar with Fahrenheit. I haven't had any symptoms and I haven't been tested positive in COVID and let's save now. And that's basically then saving an ent entry for my current status for this particular day. So I've been registered and a tool has additional capabilities like you cannot actually do self attestation uh, more than once in a day. So that's actually tracking checking that you have that status already done and you can't actually do it again. Now for the re uh, receptionist, um, you can also register uh, the guests uh, within the office room. In, and, and of course, this view is only visible for those uh, persons who have the sufficient permissions. So as an example, in this case, we could say something like uh, Emily Mancini from Simpraxis consulting uh, is, is visiting a Seattle office in USA, no fever, current temperature 96, I guess that's correct. And no, no, and saving that entry in here. And we can actually see that Emily is getting tracked uh, on that particular day. And like Sans mentioned, uh, of course, this has the contact tracing capabilities. So then you can actually say something like, okay, so in Seattle, US, uh, who are the persons who've been actually uh, registered there on a specific day? So we actually understand if there's any, any health issues for anybody. So we can actually report those things or trace back who has been meeting what people in which office. So quite nice tool um, and again available as an open source uh, reference solution for SPFX um, and the information which you can see here is stored in SharePoint, uh, SharePoint lists and we're using Microsoft Crafts of course behind the scenes. As we're building things uh, for Microsoft Teams uh, of course in SharePoint framework you absolutely have access uh, on all of the, the Microsoft Teams uh, SDK and capabilities and context. So you can do use the, the SDK's uh, entry in TypeScript and directly accessing relevant information. So all the time you're aware who's using where and what's the identity. Are you in a channel? Are you in a group? Uh, what's the application icon and all of that stuff. So so the context is, is there. Uh, also, if we when we're implementing things, we are actually implementing technically a web port, but any web port can be configured to be uh, to be exposed or to be available in multiple different uh, forms. So the web part is kind of a, can be considered as a panel, so to say. It is a, a component which can be also then exposed as a Teams personal application or as a Teams tab. And that you can absolutely also expose the Microsoft Teams um, tab with a configure to be used as a Microsoft Teams meeting application, which is a really cool option as well. But really, really simple way of, of using the existing component directly natively in the Microsoft Teams, um, which we've been using potentially in the, in the SharePoint side. But that's a quick teaser and quick look on the how do we build and how do we implement stuff uh, using SPFX for Microsoft Teams as a personal application. So we saw in that demo how we can use SharePoint framework for creating Microsoft Teams personal application. And then the question is really on why would I actually do that? Um, so 
the SharePoint framework is really the easiest way to build uh, enterprise applications uh, for Microsoft Teams. Uh, you can use the same solution, like we mentioned multiple times already, in, a, in a multiple different applications. So the same component, once again, can be a Microsoft Teams personal application or as a web part, or it can be surfaced inside of the uh, Microsoft Viva Connections uh, view. Um, really, the easy, what makes it super easy is the single sign-on and automatic hosting. So you don't have to worry about where is your code being hosted because SharePoint works as the hosting platform. So in the same way as SharePoint is being, being uh, hosting the files and pages which are being surfaced in Microsoft Teams, it's now getting more and more integrated as the application hosting platform also for Microsoft Teams. So it, that really makes the implementation of the SharePoint framework solutions super, super easy, because again, you don't need to ever have to worry about where the code is being hosted and how to get those permissions and how to get the Azure AD application, all of that getting created. So super simple thing. Now, pretty recently, we added a additional uh, support uh, for, for SharePoint framework. And let's have a look on how we can implement a Microsoft Teams meeting application using SharePoint framework. Hello. So in this demo, we'll have a look on a SharePoint framework solution, which is working as a Microsoft Teams application. So what are the bits and pieces and code which we need to take into account when we are implementing this kind of a solution? So first of all, uh, the experience obviously is exactly the same as for any Microsoft Teams and meeting application. So we can include those meeting application, uh, meeting apps directly in the meeting. So in this case, we have here meeting ongoing with Microsoft Build 2020 planning meeting. And I can then include the solution as part of this plus uh, icon over here. And we can see the SPFX Teams meeting app voting solution available to be added. So in this case, this is relatively simple uh, UX and relatively simple experience uh, by design. So uh, it's easier to understand how, how things are working and then we can start extending that within the future versions. So let's include this solution in. And this is a kind of a form or is our, or a query or question and answer a kind of a solution. So it's an app voting system. So I can add it to the meeting and uh, potential configuration and then doing save in here. Now, the meeting application is now added. We can actually see the meeting participants. Of course, we're using Graph Toolkit to present all of this information because Graph Toolkit is the easiest way to actually design or present the UX in the right format. In general, this is SPFX solution, like mentioned, it's the full screen rendering. And then uh, when we click the new topic, we're, we're popping up a pop-up, so to say, or virtual pop-up in this kind of a pop-up in this case, where we can then add uh, the question. Um, so let's actually add a question here, which says, uh, will you be participating on the build 2021 virtually this year? And the basic idea of this solution is quite simple. So you would be able to do something similar with Microsoft Forms potentially. Uh, so it's basically questions which you can answer yes or no. But we wanted to demonstrate the capabilities in a simplistic way, or simplistic way rather than overcomplicate uh, or provide overcomplicated solutions. So in this case, we, we have then a one question here. Uh, of course, we can add multiple questions to be ready in the meeting. So this is kind of the pre-meeting experience. So I could add here a secondary question, which could be something like, uh, are you excited on, on knowing more about the Microsoft Teams uh, toolkit? Oh, toolkit v2. That's actually the latest version, which we will talk about in Microsoft Build. So there we go. And now I can actually launch uh, these questions uh, to be available for the attendees. So I can choose here and click launch, and that's going to then actually send a request to an API to the bot, and bot will actually then uh, show that question in the chat for the, all of the attendees in the meeting. So in this case, uh, we, were, we were asking, will it be participating in a Build 2020 virtual this year? And I'm going to answer yes. Um, this is basically an adaptive, well, not basically, it is an adaptive cart. Um, and the bot behind of the scenes is kind of a following up on the events and following up on the, what the attendees are doing, and then reacting and also updating this cart. As you can saw right now, a secondary attendee of this meeting actually uh, also responded. So this way we can actually then 
collect uh, the, the survey results super easily using this application also afterwards. And now I can actually go to the application and I can also say here that, okay, so we had this question already there for a while, so I can close the question and then we'll get the final results again updated on the adapt card. So if I go back into chat, uh, we can say that that's the end result. Nobody can anymore vote. And behind of the scenes, it's based on a bot because when you're creating a meeting application, at least right now, you always need to have a bot behind of the scenes. So it's kind of a three pieces here. SPFX is taking care of the UX layer on the pre-meeting uh, application, or the, this pre-meeting application, and this configurer or operating uh, UX. Then we have the bot, and then we have adaptive cards, which are being shown in the chat window for people to actually uh, vote based on the questions uh, which are available. So now we can actually see the secondary question here. And of course, we're super excited on the fact that you can use Microsoft Teams toolkits also build SPFX solutions, which is really, really cool. Now, that's kind of the, the UX scenario and a UX layer. And, and let's jump on the code quickly to have a look on the few key uh, uh, elements of the code sign. So first of all, uh, it is a SPFX uh, solution from the U for the UX layer. And again, we will need to have a bot, at least for now, uh, for any meeting application. So the bot is the one which is actually having permissions to follow up on who is currently in a meeting and also being able to operate in the chat window. So be able, able to send those adaptive cards in and, and updating those adaptive cards. And how do we do it? And this implementation is that we basically have a API. Let me actually go in here. A custom web API available in Azure, uh, which is called Securely using SPFX. So again, from a SPF, SPFX perspective, it's TypeScript, uh, super easy to operate, super easy to implement. Uh, you're implementing, a, in this case, a React components and React implementation. And then we're using the Azure uh, HTTP client in the code to, over, to call securely uh, those endpoints, which are hosted securely in Azure AD. And that is then operating with the bot, and bot is the one which is operating uh, towards all of the attendees in a meeting. It's a relatively complex, complex scenario, uh, but we'll, as I said, we're looking into simplifying this potentially in the future. One thing to also notice here, uh, as part of the SharePoint framework 1.12.1, uh, you can actually embed your own zip as uh, sort a of manifest solution as part of the solution, uh, solution structure. And this means that I can then send you a one solution file, which contains the code, which is being automatically hosted in Microsoft 365, and also the configuration. Of course, we still need to configure the bot to be running as a manual thing in the back end. But the UX layer and the configuration to be able to call the bot can be actually included inside of the solution package, so it can be really easily installed and to get available in the tenant. And maybe one more thing to notice here uh, is for the configurable tabs. Um, this is actually the trick how to define, uh, well, it's not a trick, uh, it's by design. This is how do we define that configurable tab is actually a meeting application. So it's being exposed uh, in the meeting experiences. And in the configuration URL, we're using that uh, relatively cryptic URL, but this is basically a cryptic URL, which is fully documented, which defines that the solution is being actually hosted by SharePoint. And dynamically, it will be this component ID, which is the one which is actually uh, rendering uh, the UX layer. So in our case, the UX layer, which we saw in the picture in here. And that's how we're kind of linking between the Microsoft Teams directly to the SharePoint framework and SharePoint being this platform hosting your solutions without any additional complexity. But that's all we're going to do in this demo. So thank you for watching and hopefully that was useful and a cool scenario as well. Thank you. Now let's move to the Microsoft uh, Viva connection side of the discussion and what is this Microsoft Viva Connection all about? And Microsoft Viva Connection is really your gateway to the modern ex employee experiences. So we're kind of making it easier uh, for integrating the great corporate communicational tooling in SharePoint directly in the collaboration tooling in the Microsoft Teams. And we're adding additional extensibility options as part of this integration. Now, Microsoft Viva uh, connections is still partly in preview. Some of the pieces have been GA. So within the upcoming slides, you'll see some stuff which is still coming, and we're going to talk about the upcoming and private preview as well. 
Now, what are the extensibility options in the Microsoft Viva connection? So first of all, you have full controls what is being presented inside of the Microsoft Teams in the Viva Connections experience. So if you're using the desktop view, you can actually see the whole kind of a classic SharePoint modern portal inside of the Microsoft Teams. And that really helps on making it sure that your employees don't have to move away from the Microsoft Teams. They can access the corporate communicational information, documentation, guidance, uh, syntax, uh, SharePoint syntax information, maybe Viva topics directly inside of the, of the Microsoft Teams. And, and you can actually define what's being presented. So you can include custom web parts, custom experiences, integration to line of business application. Uh, you can also extend uh, that experience using the SharePoint framework uh, extensions. So you can add headers and footers and, few, uh, and additional options. And as one of the, the next uh, steps of the Viva connection, we're also introducing a native mobile experience, which will be then personalized based on your company uh, brand. And let's talk about that one a bit. So this is an area where we're investing quite heavily within upcoming, uh, upcoming months and upcoming uh, uh, time periods. So first of all, there's kind of a three different uh, views on this. Uh, so the first one uh, is really for you to access the relevant information what's here. So completing acts, completing uh, tasks and focusing on the critical information. The second option is really around uh, the discovering and engage with news and conversation. So this is kind of the, the feed where you can actually follow up on what's happening inside of your company. And the third option is then the, the uh, assets and uh, resources. So you can actually access the files and guidance directly in the mobile uh, view. Within this view, uh, we actually surface individual uh, tasks or nuggets or cards or, or tiles, however we want to actually call this. And all of these cards are customizable. So we as a Microsoft, we will give you a set of uh, out of the box cards, which you can take advantage. And then you can actually uh, define your custom experiences, you implementing also custom cards. Now, as part of this experience, this is a mobile experience. So it's a native mobile designed experience, which you can provide for all of your employees to easily get access on the information on your company. Now, as part of the experiences, we can personalize uh, and the, include the company name and the uh, company logos and the brand as part of this uh, experience. We can uh, implement different kind of uh, shapes and different kind of experiences. So there are small cards uh, and larger cards available to take advantage. And again, you are responsible uh, or you can customize this experience based on your company need. So if, if we think about how it looks in practice, uh, it's really around uh, integration to your company uh, information directly within a mobile view. And based on your company's uh, line of business applications, you can then modify on surface the relevant information here as well. Something like your uh, timesheet uh, submissions or a vac upcoming vacations or the latest news, you can surface that in the native mobile experience directly. Now, what's really cool about this experience is, is as well that we're taking advantage of the adaptive cards technology, of course, and which is widely used by the multiple all of the application in Microsoft 365. So you can have even more advanced adaptive card experiences, and then as needed, you can transition to the actual application or maybe a bot uh, in the Microsoft Teams. Now, as an employee or as a owner of this experience, you, we will actually give you a simple web-based tool to design this experience. Uh, where we will then provide some out-of-the-box experiences, and then we can actually you can design what are the experiences and designs available for your employees. So this tool will be available for all of the companies uh, as part of the Viva Connection experience. So you can design and modify individual tabs or individual cards in the same way as you can do uh, in the web parts for a normal SharePoint modern page. If you think about the end-to-end the -end flow, um, you, we can have those individual cards and a card can then have an extension. Uh, it can have a dynamic title and icons, dynamic description, dynamic rendering. It can have multiple buttons. Uh, all of this is being rendered in an adaptive, adaptive card way. So it's super, super performant. That can actually then fire or show 
and additional cards and additional information about the task which you're about to do. And if that's not sufficient, you can be, have a deep link directly natively to the Microsoft Team personal application, where you can then manage uh, the rest of the business operation. Now, just a few examples and calling out uh, options on this one. And we also, like I said, this is coming to preview and a private preview and the spring. We'll talk about the private preview within a few slides, but it's really designed uh, to create a personalized experience for your information workers or frontline workers as well. So you can actually even personalize based on uh, targeting uh, mechanisms and uh, those cards based on the users who are using the mobile experience. Now, let's have a, a detailed look on what the Viva connection experiences are and how we can customize those uh, from a UX perspective. So in this demo, we'll have a look on what is the Microsoft Viva connections and what are the extensibility options there uh, using SharePoint framework. And here we can see a quite typical uh, corporate communicational portal in SharePoint. So this is, uh, in my case, it's the root side of my tenant. Of course, it could be any other, other location as well. And it has features like the, the app bar being visible on the left bar. We can see that it's customized based on my company and we can see the latest news and all of that stuff. Now, as part of the Viva connection, uh, especially the desktop part, we are able to then uh, integrate the Viva connection, uh, the, the SharePoint portal natively within the Microsoft Teams. And that's really the key part of the Viva connection. So we can actually expose that native SharePoint uh, corporate communication portal directly within a, within the Microsoft Teams side. And things work in a, in, a, in a seamless way here. So you can actually communicate, collaborate in the Teams and different channels. You can do chats, but then on the left navigation, you can actually see the Contoso icon, which is personalized based on your company. So you can design uh, the look and feel, how it's being exposed, how the information is being uh, valued. And the key point here is also that you control what is actually exposed within a portal and how things are being uh, being looked for. Here, a good, good point as well is that you can actually move across the different uh, sites the natively within in the Microsoft team. So I can actually move across the different experiences within this particular tenant uh, directly using the Viva Connections uh, navigation option. This is the global navigation uh, from my particular tenant. And I can, of course, have a look on the, on the latest news. I can have a look on the latest news in a more news perspective as well. So we can actually see the latest news uh, from the sites and we can view them. We can have a look on more detail on the, on the information and all of that. And we are all the time actually still in the context of the Microsoft Teams. So we don't actually need to move away from the location where we are natively working. Really important piece here uh, to realize also is that as we're moving between the, the experiences, this portal, which you can see all the experiences, all the, the SharePoint sites, which you can see here, are available for you to configure any way you want. So if I would now go to the Microsoft Team land uh, to the SharePoint site, so we can actually customize this experience. So let's go to, oh, let's actually go to the edit mode. And I can, of course, add here uh, whatever custom web part. So in my case, there's quite a few different custom web parts, but I'm going to use just the personal tasks, which is a custom web part using the Microsoft Craft to access my personal tasks. And because I want to make sure that the person there are personalized, personalized experiences in this portal based on the user. Let's republish that. And as we go back in the Teams, uh, we can actually see that when we reload uh, that experience, let's go back in the active, oop, let's go back in the Teams and let's go back in the Contoso. We can actually see that and the experience is of course updated. So you control what is being rendered uh, in the Microsoft Teams experience based on the configuration which we have in the, in the associated SharePoint experience or SharePoint portal. So let's get him back in here. We can actually see that my tasks is working natively in here and it works, uh, yeah, of course, in a desktop and in a mobile as well. The mobile is though, however, slightly different. Now, the, the one thing about where we are betting uh, and where we're investing heavily in the uh, Microsoft Viva connections is also the mobile experience. And one of the things in there is the native support of having mobile Viva connection experiences, which are also personalized based on your company design. So what I've done here is that I'm actually watching this tenant uh, native dashboard, which is the design 
a tool for defining and what do we want our employers to see in our personalized mobile experience. Like in my case, let's actually go to the preview mode. So uh, in this case, we have a link to the, the landing page so we can actually see uh, the, pro the, the mobile. in the mobile, we can see the information and corporate communicational news. We can link to an external location. You could have something like your flight details being visible there, being rendered natively within a mobile experience. Slightly different, of course, that's not opening up on the left menu when we're watching on the, on the mobile. Uh, you could have a custom application like COVID checking application natively integrated in here as well. And you would be able to check into the office directly from a mobile experience. You could have additional things like stocks or business operations, which are then uh, adding additional uh, capabilities and business operations natively within the mobile experience. So as an ex this is a good example from the adaptive card designer side, where we're uh, operating or adding business operations and business data directly from the mobile experience. So you control the design of the mobile experience, you control the branding of the mobile experience, and then from a partner and ISV perspective, you can actually design your own cards which are connected to the backend. And they have a deep linking capability so we can open up the personal, personal, personal application or a bot directly by clicking the link as well, which is really, really cool. Now, from a cre data creation perspective, uh, this is just uh, available uh, as a new component as part of a upcoming version of the Microsoft uh, of the of the SharePoint framework. So there's a new component available when we're targeting SharePoint Online. Uh, so if we go through the basic questions, I'm not going to deep dive on those so right now, we have a new component option, which is adaptive card extension. And this is something which you get access to if you sign in to a private preview already starting from end of May 2021. So we give you access on the additional component types, we get access on this templates, we give access on the guidance and hands-on labs, how to build this native mobile experiences using the new component options. But that's basically in a, in a short uh, turn, a quick explanation of what is Microsoft Viva Connections. So it's a combination of the portal experiences, which are completely extensible based on the business, uh, business requirements or based on customer requirements. If you're a partner, you can implement custom web parts, custom design uh, based on the customer requirements. And then we have this additional mobile native uh, experience, which can be accessed through any mobile device. And it's natively rendered based on, again, based on company branding uh, as an own company application in the mobile device. So now that you've seen what the Viva Connection is all about, we would like to invite you uh, to our private preview, uh, which is open for everybody to register. So go to agms-viva-connection-preview-register, uh, which is the URL where you'll find a form where you can register and provide your details, and we will then enable the needed capabilities within your tenant. And this is really for you to take, take advantage uh, and get a preview on what's coming as part of this Viva Connection mobile experience and also if you're a developer, you can start implementing integration to maybe your applications, uh, which are then in the hosted in the Microsoft Teams as a personal applications or, uh, or as a bot. Now, as part of this uh, session, we also wanted to quickly recap what's part of the SharePoint Framework 1.12.1 uh, release, which happened in April this spring. So this is the latest version of SharePoint Framework, where we updated some of the technical uh, dependencies in the SharePoint Framework, so we're in Node 14 level and Cloud 4. And there's additional integration options with Microsoft Teams from a personal application. So under, I'm sorry, from a meeting application perspective. And then also you are able to create complex uh, Microsoft Teams uh, solution as part of this implementation. There's a few other, other uh, functionalities available there as well. Now, as part of the build announcements, however, we are introducing additional 
uh, capabilities, additional options available. So the Teams Toolkit uh, V2 uh, will have a native SharePoint framework uh, integration support. And this really gives the option that when you are implementing or when you start creating your solutions in the, uh, in the Teams Toolkit, you can actually choose those solutions to be hosted in a SharePoint. So you don't have to again worry about uh, the Azure application setup or configurations for the UX layer. Now, if you think about the future uh, uh, design or future focus on SharePoint framework, we're looking into having uh, a focus, more focus on the Viva connections and um, Teams, uh, Microsoft Teams is a really big focus area. We're adding additional integration options, looking into potentially uh, removing the requirement of having a bot in the context of meeting application. All these things are being uh, considered and additional, obviously, Visual Studio Code tooling options as well. And one thing uh, which is also happening is that we're doing end-to-end -end modernization on the SharePoint store and in our tenant app catalog design. And let's have a quick preview on that ex new experience uh, before we close up the session. So in this demo, we'll do a quick quick preview related on the modernization investments, what we're doing in the SharePoint store. And, and all of these investments are focusing on SharePoint framework, and then uh, SharePoint framework will also again be used in the SharePoint or in the Microsoft Teams or in the Mic uh, Viva uh, solutions uh, for the UX extensibility options. And in the SharePoint store side, we're doing quite significant uh, investments for modernizing the end-to-end acquire process, the approval process uh, from an end user and administrative pers uh, perspective uh, as well. So here I'm in a uh, normal SharePoint, modern SharePoint site. I went to the add an app functionality and we can already see that this experience has been modernized. Right now in this particular environment, we do not have any solutions from the organization. So that's why we don't actually see them in here, but I can easily find the SharePoint store and I can go to the SharePoint store and I can see all of the different solutions, currently SharePoint add-ins and SharePoint framework solutions, which are available on this sign. Um, as an example, we can filter based on the categories, based on the feature apps or an apps will lump, which is a, a list uh, managed by the Microsoft. So as an example, let's go here. Let's do a one example for uh, with uh, lightning tools. As an example here, social square discussion forum. So deliver point, let's do that one. We can actually see Lightning Tools insights uh, or additional details related on Lightning Tools application, with the videos and images and all of that stuff, details, details and support. So we can actually get more information around that particular application. And as I'm an end user in this case, I can request that solution to be acquired by the tenant administrator or to be precise by the app uh, catalog or tenant app catalog administrator. So depending again on the roles which have been defined in the tenant level. And as an end user, because the solution does require higher level permissions, so it's not just isolated on the user level, um, I can only request that to be acquired by the tenant administrators or the app catalog administrators. And I can provide a really good reason, a reason for getting this solution in here. And that will then send the request for the app catalog administrator. And as an end user, uh, I can continue working and I can easily get back on the communication side. Now, in future, we are looking into also having uh, a native support for end users to acquire simple solutions and simple applications which do not require tenant level app uh, permissions. And that's really the challenge here. In many cases, SharePoint Framework Solution does require quite heavy permissions and that's why the end user can't acquire them. But that's a, a really, really a kind of quick preview on what are we doing here. We're modernizing the whole end-to-end -end experience, including the tenant app catalog side, including the, uh, the SharePoint store. So there's a significant investments uh, coming on, on the store experience within the, well, starting from summer 2021, all the way through for the next uh, 12 months as well. Great, so now that you're probably interested on in getting started on uh, implementing uh, Microsoft Teams experiences or Microsoft and uh, Viva connection experiences using SharePoint Framework, please, please, please do take advantage of our community assets. So we do have a really vibrant open source community where we built uh, samples and we have community calls together with our MVPs and other community members. So we have more than 600 samples on how to extend Microsoft 365 available for you to take advantage. So don't start from 
from scratch, rather have a look on what's available and then reuse those assets as needed. We also had a have a really, really uh, active uh, YouTube channel where we have a lot of guidance videos and sample videos available for you to take advantage. Now, Related on those samples, which I mentioned, we do have two different sample galleries right now. We're looking into having a unified one uh, pretty soon or later this year. Um, but if you're looking into Microsoft Teams samples, this includes bots and personal applications, not such just with SharePoint Framework, but also using uh, SharePoint Framework. AKMS Teams samples is the address. If you're looking into SharePoint Framework web part samples, uh, AKMS SPFX web parts would be the URL for that. And from there, you can then find and use the search query, search tools and all of that finding what sample is relevant for you and what you can use as the starting point for your solution design. Now, as a, a final note, please do get involved. Uh, we do have active community and we do have a lot of open source assets. Um, the Microsoft 365 is a huge opportunity. There are ten, hundreds of millions of people using that on a day-to-day -day basis as part of their uh, work uh, experience. So you can extend and make their life easier by implementing your solution directly where they work on a day-to-day -day basis. And go to HTTPS, AKMS M365 BMP to find out more around our community and documentation and tooling assets. But thank you everybody for watching. Let's stay in touch.